core training. All right, it's not just about getting a six pack of good crunches, side bends, extensions. Core for an athlete means keeping yourself solid and steady. Being connected like the core of an apple, right? Head, shoulders, arms, legs. We want our core to be one piece, and that's what we're doing here. I'm going to sit, I'm going to get my legs wide, I'm going to put my hands out. Partner's going to be behind me. He's going to take care of me now. And he's just going to put some pressure as much as I can take, as long as my head maintains its position. When we talk about breaking this stick, I'm not headbutting that guy as I hit him. I want my head to be in place. That point of impact occurs right there, and my head doesn't move. No whiplash on my part. I'm going to start training my muscles for this. If anyone here is helping out soccer players, it's a great thing to help with soccer, too. Talk about their concussion issues. Do this for a minute, and we're just going to transfer from side to side. At no point do I have, I always have one hand on my head. When he transfers over, he puts two on, and then he moves around. Okay, I'm breathing the whole time. If I want more, I pump up the crowd. I tell them more. If I want less, I do the opposite. That way we don't have guys trying to whisper in a loud way, you know, give me more, and they're twisting their necks. All right, we stay safe with them. Just have that guy be semi attentive okay? If he can read at a third grade level, it'll be fine. <laughs> all right, working on our feet quickness. We've all seen like a mirror drill. We want to exaggerate foot quickness here. You can't get out of quickening right here. I focus on P to P, and I'm just either staying on my leverage or you know, one side of them, or I can stay head up and it doesn't matter. I just want to burn this out. Trust me, that, that stinks. You can imagine. So 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. You can you know, take it as long as you want, building the confidence of the guys, and that's what we'll need. We'll need running sets, two, three, four sets. 10 seconds and they just go back and forth. You work, then you rest. You work, then you rest. If you wanted in line, that's fine too, but you know, guys need reps, buzzing their feet and reacting on folks. Human sled. I'll show you what this looks like, because this is going to work accelerating our feet. All right, we can do this with a metal sled if you have them. That's great. I like this because I don't think guys touch each other enough in the off season unless they're wrestling or playing basketball. A certain inoculation comes with grabbing someone else, having them push against you, feeling what that's like. I think there's merit to guys having to push their coaches or each other around. This athlete's going to be in a lean position here, trying to keep his body straight. He's just going to lunge forward, driving me back or driving his sled back and pushing himself forward, trying to get as long a range as he can, handling that position there. Now, this is the one we just, a little hybrid. We do quick feet and then two lunges. So it's quick, quick, quick. Drive, 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 quick, quick, quick. Drive, drive, drive. And you just tell them, I want just two steps. I think that's the best way to do it. If you start doing the normal sled like you would against metal with bodies, sometimes guys can't hold each other up. Uh, a better way might be to put a towel around a guy's waist to get that traditional sled approach. But this one works well because if, if we're doing tackling, we have that idea of pushing and pulling. If you really trust guys, you can have them put hands on shoulders, but we use hands on hands in case there's a miscue and we don't have to run to the dentist and get the chicklets replaced. All right. Okay. Uh, I want to start going over because I, I got to wrap up here. Let's start going over like three tackling drills. Remember we talked about the idea of striking up. All right. That's the idea right here. That's what's being taught with a pro is that to make sure you're hitting up not just out. And we want to give a drill, even without pads, safely where we can teach this. So athletes driving back, sure he drives them back in the drill, but you'll see the cue right here. Oh, no, I didn't just do that. Yeah, you see the cue right here. Hey, you hit there, I want you up. You know, he wants to let him know, hit him up. And that bam, athlete does it right right there. It's a strike up. So what we do with this drill, we call this a trust fall. Fit. And these are the drills that we put on the DVD. You know, we got a dozen drills like this. Some of the funnel, some of the open field. We want this guy in that sled position, leaning forward, safety position, so again, we don't lose teeth. Like a front squat, hands on shoulders, chin dug into that top form, mouth closed. Coach will call the ball here. You know, it can be on a set go. This athlete's in a strong athletic position. His hands are cocked. All right, on fire, he knows the shoot up, that triple extension, six inch punch without the punching part. 
he knows his fit there, we're safe with it, and then he works on accelerating his feet. Because again, friends, this guy's not trying to advance. We get a chance to learn acceleration there because we're gonna to totally kick his butt in, and we're gonna drive him back, but we get a chance to learn that with this drill. And then, at this point, the wrapping sort of just happens. We don't really need to encourage that so much now, but we do want guys to start feeling better with this. And you'll see with the demos we did, we have a lot where guys went through, and some of these guys, it was the first time doing the drill, so you'll see they got better. Take heart, your guys will get better the more they do this. Application-wise, set them all up in a line, and they go one right after another doing it. Imagine them having a set of squat, followed by three repetitions of that with the guy they just used to have spot them for their squat. It doesn't take a lot of room in your weight room, especially in, in January, February, days like March here. That's an easy way to teach tackling with very little space. And now we're just getting those guys to get that quick fit and working something they're going to use on the field. All right, the open field stuff. Definitely want to be able to touch on some of this as we go through. As we see a pro approach, great angle. You know, he goes off the diving board. I'm not saying guys don't always try to do this and make a big hit in the open field, but he definitely can secure this. If they're not, this safe doesn't come off his man, they're in big trouble here. You know, a guy with a head full of steam in the open field. They were fortunate right there. But that's what we just want to learn with some of these drills. Here's what happens in a game. Here's how we'll be able to improve it so that these habits that get encouraged in practice don't get facilitated. All right, we've seen this before. Call this the OLA. It happens on every team coach. So, And it happens in practice on a non-contact day where that guy registers a tackle in the coach's eyes in his own mind by just top, uh, popping the pad, top of the pad of the ball carrier. Okay? And sometimes it shows itself because he takes a bad angle and now he just puts a hand up. That'll never bring down anyone worth their salt. It's something we just necessarily don't want to practice or train. So we're going to set up a drill like this. And now, not only will this technique carry over you know, in this drill, but also in scrimmage. Putting the pads on and getting guys to hit becomes easy once their feet are in position. Ten yards apart, here's the ball carrier, here's the tackler on go. It behooves the ball carrier to try to get in the middle so he can create a three-way go for himself. What do you think this guy's going to do? I want to eliminate the chance for that. I'm going to pick a side on this ball carrier, and I'm going to give him a two-way go. Quicken my feet about five yards away, they naturally spread. I think that's the tackle. Even with his, out his head getting across, I think for the most part, he's going to get a tackle in a game if he gets that close to a guy. His feet keep moving. This is a fun drill too. I think it, this could be used as conditioning, especially if you rifle off reps one after another. Guys getting to react, even the big heavy guys, um, getting them to react off each other and see if they can get a two-hand touch below the waist. With the DP, we want to set up a plan for this so that guys can learn this effectively because this gets to be a bit advanced. It can be a bit overwhelming for a young player. Sometimes just setting them up at a line at first is the way to go to get them in confidence. And that was I'm just teaching tapping two hands below.